Just like to offer a big shout out to Touchdown Digital for sponsoring this week's video. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's Glenn Samuel and you're watching Sniper Photography. Look, it's been some time since I posted a video here on this uh, on my YouTube channel and there's various reasons for that. Um, basically, uh, I've just returned or we have just returned from an overseas trip to Alaska and uh, Canada, the Canadian Rockies. <clears throat> now, this is a two-part video. This first video here will be about Alaska and <clears throat> our experiences in Alaska and why I think every photographer uh, should go to Alaska. Um, but before that, um, the reason why I haven't posted videos for some time is because I've just been too busy. Uh, too busy with, um, with work, actually, just far too busy. And then for about three months here, <clears throat> we've had horrific weather, um, horrendous weather, actually. We've had landslides, road slides, any other type of slide you can think of. We've had it here in the mountains and a lot of the roads, a lot of the national park was closed due to landslides and slippage and trees falling over at a rate of knots. So <clears throat> it all comes down to the rainfall we've had along the uh, east coast of New South Wales, or actually along the east coast of Australia actually, but uh, we've been fairly uh, severely impacted here in the mountains with the weather over the last three months. So moving forward, we, uh, we left here on the 29th of August and we flew direct to um, Vancouver. Then we had a three hour layoff and then we caught another plane over to Alaska. Now, most Australians, when they travel to Alaska, they fly to uh, the United States and then probably to Seattle, and then they get on a cruise ship and cruise up the um, Inside Passage. <clears throat> now, that's a good way to see Alaska, but there's better ways of seeing it. And uh, for one, I probably would never do a cruise, um, especially over towards Alaska, because you they say you see a lot, but talking to the people, you don't really see that much. Now, what we did, we flew into Alaska and um, just slept the entire day we got there. The next day we were picked up and we were taken to um, Great Alaskan Holidays. This is where we rented the RV. Now, I'll put a picture up of the RV here very shortly. And that was the uh, our home for 14 days. It was a 30 footer, um, 30 foot motorhome, had everything in it fully self-contained, and we found that uh, we could drive anywhere we wanted to, when we wanted to, and stayed wherever we wanted to. Um, for 14 days, we actually drove up to the North Pole, up towards the Arctic Circle. Um, we, The wife wanted to see the Santa Claus house, which we did, and we met Mr. and Mrs. Claus there. We could see them making all the toys, and an unbelievable experience. Um, if you ever get the chance to come to Alaska, you have to travel up to, up past Fairbanks to towards the North Pole to see Santa's house, and it's absolutely fantastic. And I'll put a couple of pictures up there, just like tourist shots I took, but absolutely fantastic. Uh, we came back down through Denali National Park, which is um, the highest mountain peak in the United States. Uh, absolutely brilliant, uh, still covered in snow. Um, lots of people though, we, uh, we didn't go right into the park. We found that we had uh, better opportunities to see the Denali Mountain from the actual roadside actually. Um, so that's what we did out of our motorhome. Uh, the motorhome was absolutely outstanding. And I believe that's probably one of the best ways to see a state like Alaska because it's designed for it. Now, um, the title of this video, the thumbnail, was The Last Frontier, and they've actually got that on their number plates in Alaska. It's called The Last Frontier, and it is. It is The Last Frontier. It is a hard place, but fantastic place to go and visit and photograph. Um, we did a couple of things. Well, first up, the wife and I, we went out on a dog sled mushing team. Um, we flew out to a glacier in a very small helicopter, landed on this glacier up, a, up with, the, with the sled dogs, and the mushers who stay there uh, in the snow, in the ice for weeks on end, training these dogs. Uh, we went on a five mile um, dog, dog sled ride, which was just absolutely fantastic. 
Um, these animals are just incredible. They'll run two and three and 400 miles, you know, every couple of days and they'll just want to go again. They're just incredible. But to be actually out there on the ice with these people, um, it was incredible. These people that live with these dogs uh, don't have running water, don't have power, they have a generator, no sanitary options, no toilets. It's just a plastic bag and a shovel. And these people live out there. It is incredible. Um, probably one of the best experiences of my life. And it's really well worth seeing. Um, then I took a small plane flight to Katamai National Park. One, um, one of the things on my bucket list for photography was to photograph the bears in the wild. Now this is not a zoo, this is in the wild. And you'll see the photos here at the end of this video. Um, we were very close to the bears. We caught a plane, there was only six seats on this plane, um, including the pilot. And we landed on the beach, it was a beach landing. And we walked out in a single file and we could see the bears out on the beach. And these bears were digging for clams, as you'll see in these pictures. Uh, with these images, and these bears are massive. These, these animals are 230, 240 kilos each. They're big units, and they're a wild animal. Um, they will kill you. But with our guide, he knew how close we could get to these bears, and I was shooting with a uh, 400 millimeter lens, which um, really helped me greatly. I didn't have to get so close to them, but they did come very close. And you'll see one of the images here with the guide, and the group of people, there was two other groups, and that was the group that um, I took a photo of, and we were standing next to those people. But absolutely incredible experience to fly out to Katamai National Park and to photograph these bears in the wild. Um, they dig for clams, and the clams are like that. They eat over 100 a day. These animals are just phenomenal creatures. They just really are, especially when you get so close to them. So I took a lot of good images of those, um, of those beautiful, beautiful animals, those uh, brown brown bears, and yes, they are man-eaters, so you have to be very careful, but it was well well organized by that company, and I'll put a link to that company down in the description below with everything else. Uh, then we uh, were back in the motorhome, and we're just driving around, and we pulled up at um, a place called Whittier, which um, you have to travel through a tunnel, which is incredible. You, you, tr you travel through this tunnel, and you share it with a train, so you're actually driving on a train line, and they stagger it between motorists and motorhomes and trucks and cars and the trains and it's $13 one way um, US but absolutely incredible experience uh, we just couldn't believe what we were seeing in Alaska it was just um, it is it's the last frontier and I would I go back there absolutely it is just phenomenal to photograph um, the mountains they're mountainous it's mountainous area now in winter time in Alaska they have 23 hours of darkness and a couple of hours of sunshine. And then in summer, they have the reverse, 23 or 24 hours of sunlight and an hour of darkness. Our RV had blockout curtains, um, which we didn't really need because we were in between. Um, they were just coming out of their summer. Now, parts of Alaska close uh, at the end of September. Uh, places like Homer and Seward, they, everyone leaves the towns. They turn off the water, power, electricity, gas, the whole lot, and they board up all the shops because the weather is ferocious. I mean, you're looking at um, well over 100 metres of snow during winter there, and it's just, it is just a hard, hard landscape. But for photography and for scenery, you just can't beat it. It is up there in the top five. Um, we did go to the Canadian Rockies after this, and that is right up there as well. But Alaska is um, really well worth seeing. Um, it's like Hawaii. It's a, it's a state of America that's forgotten. And the people there, they're hard people. Uh, they're great people, but very hard. And I learnt very early on in the piece that um, they're not called Americans, the people that live in Alaska. They're Alaskan. Okay, so no, no, we're not American, we're Alaskan. So they're very proud of their state. And it's the least populated state of the United States as well. Now, Alaska used to be owned by the Russians and the Americans brought it off the Russians many years ago. So it is a part of um, the United States, even though it's separated by Canada, or by Canada. It is an incredible place to visit. Now, as I said, most Australians do the 
the inside passage on a cruise ship. Um, I just think you're missing out on so much. If you want to do that, that's fine. But really, there's more ways to see Alaska than on a cruise ship because you can drive or you can hire a motorhome <coughs> and just travel around, pull up. We were pulling up in on the side of um, roads where there was glaciers, right, just looking out the window. Incredible, incredible um, scenery. And we, over the 14 days, we went into five RV parks, which vary from $20 up to $100 a night. Well, the only that is to empty the tanks, the grey water and the black water, and fill up with fresh water and charge batteries. And then also, too, a lot of the RV parks in Alaska have... Uh, free Wi-Fi, they've got um, laundries and showers, and some of them are brilliant, really, really good. The, the state is set up for this type of um, adventure. And uh, Great Alaskan Holidays probably would be the pick of the bunch if you're going over there to Alaska to hire a motorhome because you get unlo unlimited mileage. We drove over 4,000 miles, and the fuel bill was $1,800 for 14 days. I mean, it's a big vehicle. It's a V8 7.1 litre Ford F4500. Um, it's a huge vehicle, um, but easy to drive, took about a day to get used to it, and then, but it's all self-contained, microwave, fridge, freezer, lounge room, it had a slide-out bedroom, it had a slide-out dining room, it was an incredible vehicle, and very easy to drive, so we believe that that's probably the, probably the best way to see Alaska, um, took some great images which I will put down below here, if you need um, any more information about travelling to Alaska, feel free to reach out. Only too pleased to help you guys <clears throat> because it is a great state, especially if you're into photography. It's just just incredible. I mean, you're driving along a road and you see all these beluga whales just off the side of the road. It's just an incredible, incredible place, Alaska. And um, But probably the best time to see it was when we seen it, just after the end of summer because they do close. Virtually half the state closes. Um, and as I said, we drove um, many, many miles or many kilometres and the further you got towards Fairbanks, the roads were um, pretty ordinary because of the ice that crushes the bitumen and it is just a, a hard, hard area actually, but fantastic to visit and the people are superb, the food's great. If you like seafood, Alaska is the number one place because they have um, a fish there called halibut, which is their uh, national fish, really. And um, they, you'll see them catch that and they bring it back to the wharves and king crab and just incredible, just an incredible place to visit. Um, so what I'll do, I'll put the information about Alaska in the description box below and <clears throat> I'll um, put up some photos of that part of Alaska, that part or the trip of Alaska we did. And as I said, any more information you need about traveling to Alaska, or if you want to do it, please feel free to reach out. Only two, please to help you. Um, it is a great place to visit, especially for scenery. And if you're into photography, you can't beat it. Seriously, it's off the scale. So that's it for another episode of Snob Photography. The next video will be about the Canadian Rockies. And that is another place that just blows your mind. Um, yeah, I could quite actually, quite easily live in the Canadian Rockies. But uh, that'll be the next video coming in the next couple of days. But please enjoy these images. Any thoughts or comments, please put them down below. And as I said, if you need any more information, if you want to travel to Alaska, doesn't matter where you are in this wonderful wide world of ours, feel free to reach out and I'll certainly uh, only too glad to help you. So until next time, my name's Glenn Some you have been watching Sniper Photography. And as I always say, be nice to yourself, family, friends. But most of all, you keep shooting, keep smiling. Bye for now. Thank you.